Welcome back to the Simulator Series. In today's episode, we're going to be creating the Achievements GUI. As always, if you guys do enjoy the video or it does help you out, make sure you smash the like button, also hit the subscribe button, and turn on post notifications on so you get notified every time I upload a brand new episode. Of course, I have a Patreon. If you guys like to support me and gain access to all the scripts and the game file they make during the series, there's a link down below in the description, and you guys can check that out. And with that being said, let's hop right into it. So, let's start off by making the GUI. We're, of course, going to go inside of the Star GUI, and we're going to throw in a brand new screen GUI into this. We'll then rename that screen GUI to achievements and then for the reset on spawn property we're going to set that to false next what we're going to do is throw a frame inside of here and then of course we want to make sure that the size is scaled and for the actual size of this i'm going to go with about 0.15 on the x and 0.4 on the y and now we have this tallest rectangle and we also want to center it vertically as well so we're going to set the anchor point y to 0.5 as well as the positions y scaled to 0.5 and now we have to move it over to the right so on the x scale of the position we could set this to 0.85 and now it appears all the way to the right hand side of our screen now i want there to be a little bit of space between this frame and the side of the screen so instead of setting this to 0.85 i'm going to set this to 0.848 and now we have that little space right there and now that we have that position let's go ahead and update the background color and we're going to set that to a nice blue now that we've done that we want to go into pretty much any of our other guis and we want to grab the exit text button and the title text label as well and then we're just going to paste that directly into this frame here now that we've done that let's go ahead and update the text of the title text label to say achievements additionally we'll make the text color a little bit of a yellow and then let's go ahead and resize this. Now on the X scale, we're going to set this to about 0.64 and on the Y, we can leave that at 0.11. Now that text label looks pretty nice. Let's make sure that it's centered horizontally, which it is, but I also want to move this up just a tiny bit. So I'm going to set the Y scale to 0.02. So now we have the text label still appearing just slightly from the top and then we can start working on this exit button. Now for the size of the exit button, we of course want to stretch this a little horizontally. So on the X, I'm going to leave that at 0.106, but on the Y, I actually want to make the Y the same size as the title text label. And for our title text label size, it's 0.11. So let's just go ahead and copy and paste it just like that. Now, along with that, I want the Y's position to be the same as the titles as well. So we're going to set this to 0.02 as well. And then looking at the exit button, I want to move this over to the left a little bit as well. So instead of setting the position to 0.875, we're actually going to set this to 0.865. And now that moves it over to the left just a little bit. Awesome. So now that we've done that, we're going to go ahead and throw in a scrolling frame inside of here. And we're going to rename this to container. Now that we've done that, as usual, let's go ahead and make sure the size is scaled. And actually, since we're here, let's go ahead and also update the automatic canvas size property. And we're going to set that to Y. And if you're unsure as to why we're doing this, it's basically to make the scrolling frame actually actually scale with however many children we put inside of it. And rather than re-explaining this whole thing over again, I just recommend go watching one of our last episodes, which should be the Rebirth Shop GUI as well. And I explained it during that. We're also going to update the canvas size as well. And we're going to set that to one on the Y scale. Awesome. Now that we've done that, let's go ahead and resize and reposition this container. We basically want it to be like 80% of this entire frame. So just to make our numbers a little bit more perfect, I'm going to set the size on the X scale to 0.97. And on the Y scale, we're going to set that to 0.85. Now that we've done that, let's go ahead and make sure that this is centered horizontally so 0.5 and 0.5 and then let's also move this up a tiny bit as well now to position this nicely on the y-axis i'm having a little bit of a hard time because of the size of it i don't want this to appear too close to the exit button and i don't want this touching the bottom neither so this is kind of how we have it right now this is the positioning for it i think once we further adjust the container it might look a little bit better otherwise what we might do is just resize it a tiny bit and just make the height a tiny bit smaller but for right now i'm going to leave it as is next what we're going to do though is set the background transparency to one We'll also set the border size pixel to zero to get rid of that black line. For the scroll bar image color, we're going to make that a white to make it much lighter. And for the scroll bar thickness, we'll set this to about a six. Cool. And now when we actually look at the scroll bar and the container frame itself, I think that looks much better. You, of course, can feel free to reposition this however you want to, but I think it actually looks pretty good. So next, what we're going to do is throw a UI grid layout inside of the container. And then we're also going to throw a frame inside of here as well. Now, we'll first start off by updating the UI grid layout. For the padding, we're going to set everything to zero. And then for the size, on the X scale, we're going to set that to about 0.98. So it's almost the entire width of the frame. And then for the Y scale, we're going to set that to 0.42. And the reason that we're setting it to that is because I want to be able to display at least two whole frames inside of here. But then I also want the player to be able to see a third one just a tiny bit as well. So let me actually show you what I mean. I'll duplicate the frame three times. And now it's a little bit hard to see because they're all white. But if we look at these two frames, we're able to see two frames in this GUI very clearly. Now, if we look at the third one, we're not able to see the entire frame, but we are able 
go see the top quarter of it, which is exactly what we want. The reason that we're doing this is because we're kind of leaving an extra one there so the player knows, oh, hey, this is actually a scrolling container and I should and can actually scroll through this to see what else is available to me. Now, if we adjust the sizing so that only two frames can be displayed perfectly inside of here, that doesn't really help tell the player that this is a scrolling frame and they can actually scroll down to see more things inside of here. Now, with that being said, we can then go ahead and actually update the cell padding as well since we have three frames inside of here already. And all we're actually going to adjust here is the Y and I want a small spacing between them. So I'm going to set that to 0 0.025. Now we see the spacing and I think that looks pretty nice. And like I said, we're still able to see a little part of the third frame, which helps indicate to the player, scroll down so you can see the rest of the things that are inside of here. Now, additionally, inside of the UI grid layout, let's go ahead and set the horizontal alignment to center. Now, with that being said, I think we're pretty much good with the UI grid layout. Let's go ahead and delete the two extra frames, just leaving this one. We're going to go back to the container for one second though. And I'm going to actually update the vertical scroll bar inset property. And we're going to set this to always so that now our frame is no longer being overlapped by our scroll bar. Now let's actually start working on this frame. And the first thing that we're going to do is actually rename this frame and we're going to rename this to say template. Now for the background color of this frame, what we're going to do is take this blue and then just basically make it a lot darker. Then inside of this frame, we're going to add a new frame and we're going to rename this to title. We're then going to update the background color of that and we want to make it kind of a darkish yellow. Then we of course need to resize it and make that scale. Now for the size on the X scale, I want this to stretch the entire width. So we're going to set that to one. And on the Y scale, we're going to set that to 0.275 so that it takes up almost about 30% of the parent frame. And I think that looks pretty good. Next, what we'll do is set the border size pixel to zero. Then we're going to duplicate the title text label and we're going to bring that inside of the title frame right here. We'll then set the text of this title text label to say something like starter eggs number one. Let's then go ahead and update the size of this. On the X scale, we're going to set that to 0.8 while on the Y scale, we'll set that to 0.85. And then we want to center this as well. So 0.5 for all of this. And cool, there we go. That's looking pretty good. Next, what we'll do is duplicate the title text label again, this time putting it inside of our template frame, and we're going to rename this to objective. Now for the text of this, we'll say something like open 15 starter eggs exclamation mark. And for the text color, we're going to set that to a white. Next, we'll resize this. I'm going to make it a little bit lengthier. So we're going to set the X scale to 0.85. But vertically, I want to make it a lot smaller. So we're going to actually set the Y to 0.225. Now, currently for the position, we have it centered both horizontally and vertically. And it does actually look pretty good, but we don't want this centered vertically. We only want it centered horizontally. So I'm going to set the Y to zero for the anchor point. And for the positions Y, I want this to appear just a little bit below our title text label. So we're actually going to set the Y position to 0.35. And there we go. That looks pretty good as well. Now that we've done that, we're going to add another frame inside of here and we're going to rename this to bottom. When it comes to the size for the X, we almost want it to be the entire width, but we want it to be a little bit smaller. So we're going to set the X to 0.975, whereas on the Y, we're going to set that to 0.35. Now that we've done that, let's go ahead and center it horizontally. There we go. And then let's position this at the bottom third of the frame. So we're going to set the position on the Y to 0.6. Now that's great. And it still gives us a little bit of space between this frame and the actual bottom right there. Now with the bottom frame, I'm going to actually set the background transparency to 0.9 so that we're still able to see where the actual outline of the frame is, but we don't see it too much. Next, what I'm going to do is throw a UI list layout inside of here. And for the fill direction, we're going to set that to horizontal. And for the horizontal alignment, we're going to set that to center. Now that we've done that, let's go ahead and throw a frame inside of here. And we're going to rename this frame to progress. Now for the size of this frame on the X scale, we're going to set that to 0.49. And on the Y, we're going to set that to one. Now this may look a little weird, but we are going to end up with two frames inside of here. So rather than a frame being inside the middle, these frames are going to be side by side each other. That's why we're using the UI list layout here. Okay, so going back to the progress frame, what we're going to do is set the background transparency. Again, I guess we'll set this one to 0.8 so we're able to see the border of this as well. Then what we're going to do is grab this objective text label, duplicate that, and put that inside of our progress frame. We'll then rename this to title. And for the text of this, we're actually just going to use the word progress. Now let's go ahead and adjust the size of this. We do want to make it a little bit taller, so we're going to set the size to 0.315 on the Y scale. And then for the position on the Y scale, we just want this to appear a tiny bit from the top, so we're going to set that to 0.088. And cool. There we go. Next, what we're going to do is throw another frame inside of here, and we're going to rename this to progress bar. Now for the background color of this, what we then want to do is grab the same blue color here, but make it a lot darker, almost being a black. Then we can go ahead and resize this. On the X scale, we'll set that to 0.95. And on the Y scale, we're going to set that to 0.5. Of course, since we've resized it, let's go ahead and reposition it. And we want to center this horizontally. So 0.5 on that X and 
0.5 on that X. And then we want this on the bottom half of the frame. So we're going to set the Y position to 0.5 as well. Now that we have that frame created, we can actually duplicate this and drag it inside of itself. And then we're going to rename this to progress. Now we'll update the background color of this. And we want to actually make this background a brightish yellow. So something like that. And then let's go ahead and reposition this. We're actually going to set everything to zero, just like that. And then we can go ahead and resize this. On the Y, we're actually going to set this to one. And then on the X, we can set this to 0.5 for right now. Now that we've done that, we're going to duplicate the title text label and put that inside of a progress bar frame. And we're going to rename this text label to be called amount. Now we'll also set the text to say something like 100 slash 100. And then we can go ahead and resize this. So I just want to make this a little bit taller. So I'm going to set the Y scale to 0.65. And then we also want to center this as well. So let's go ahead and set everything to 0.5 here, just like that. Now the white text on yellow background might not be great. So what you could do is you could increase the stroke on the text a little bit, or of course you could change the yellow color a little bit to something else that looks a little bit better here. But I'm just going to add a little bit of stroke to the amount text label. And I think that looks fine. Now to some of you, the progress bar might look pretty bad, but I think that's because we haven't put the UI corners inside of it yet. So what we'll do is throw a UI corner inside of the progress frame right here. And we're going to set the corner radius to 0.3. Now that we've done that, let's go ahead and duplicate that UI corner and put a UI corner inside of the progress bar frame. And we're going to leave that corner radius at 0.3 as well. Cool. So we have to do one more thing inside of this progress frame. And that's actually add a text button inside of here. We're going to rename this to claim because this is actually going to be the claim button whenever the player completes the achievement. For the text, we're going to set that to blank. For the background color, we're going to set that to a nice brightish green. So something like that. And for the size and the positioning of it, we basically want it to be every single thing from the progress bar. So we're going to copy the size from here, paste that just like that. We'll then grab the anchor point and the position. So let's just go ahead and copy and paste that and then set the X to 0.5 right there. And cool. We've now created that claim button. Let's then go ahead and duplicate the title text label and throw that inside of claim. Let's set the text of this text label to say claim reward. And then we also want to resize that as well. Let's go ahead and update the Y of this text label to 0.85. And of course we need to center this as well. So 0.5 for everything there. Cool. Now that we've done that, let's go ahead and also throw a UI corner inside of here. And again, we're going to set the corner radius to 0.3, just like that. Awesome. So now that we've done that, we're pretty much done with creating the progress frame. We can then go ahead and actually set the background transparency of this frame to one so that we no longer see that. And also we can make this claim button not be visible by default. Then what we're going to do is duplicate this progress frame and we're going to rename this one to reward. Now going into the reward frame, we can actually delete our claim button right here. And for our title, we're going to update the text of this to actually say reward. Then we can actually rename this progress bar frame to be called background. Then we can go inside of it and we're going to actually delete the progress frame right there. Then inside of here, we have our text label called amount. What we're going to do is actually rename this text label. Instead of being called amount, we're going to call this string. And then we're going to duplicate this and make one of them not visible. Now we'll go to the one that's visible and we're going to rename this to be called number. And the text of this should be something like 100 M. Then what we're going to do is resize this a little bit. So we're going to make it a little bit smaller horizontally. We'll set the X to 0.5. Then inside of here, we're going to throw in an image label and we're going to rename this to icon. Now for the size of this, we're going to set the X to 0.2 and the Y to 0.8. We're also going to set the scale type to fit. And then for the image, we can honestly just grab any of our currency icons. So let's just take this gems icon, for example, here. Now we want to center it vertically. So let's set both of these to 0.5. And then we want to move this a little bit towards the center. So we're going to set the X to 0.2, just like that. And the last thing we need to do with this image label is set the background transparency to one. And now that image label looks pretty good. Now going back to the number text label, we don't actually want to center this horizontally. So we're going to set that anchor point to 0 0.0. And then for the position, we're actually going to set this to 0.4. Now that we've done that, we're also going to update the text X alignment to be left. And then we can look at this text label. And now that number is displayed pretty nicely. We can even look at what the number looks like if it's smaller. So let's just say 10 M or we can even look at what it looks like if it's larger. So 10.00 M. And either way, the number looks pretty good there right beside the currency icon. And I like how that is. So if you're confused by why we have the number and icon elements here, it's because we want to be able to easily display different types of rewards inside of this rewards frame. So we'll actually set the text of the string to help it make sense to you. We'll set the text of the string text label to say plus 10% click power. So to hopefully help you understand the number and icon elements are going to be used whenever we're giving the player a currency reward, which is pretty simple to display. But when we're giving them a reward that's different from a currency, we're going to display that in a string. So we'll be using the string label sometimes. And when we're not using the string label, we'll be using the icon and number elements instead. Cool. With all that being said, we're pretty much done with the bottom frame. The last thing we want to do is set the background transparency of this to one so that we no longer see it. And now I think the bottom frame actually looks pretty good. Just to give some final touches to this, what we'll then do is throw a UI corner inside of our template. We'll set the corner radius of this to 0 0.075. And then we'll throw a UI corner inside of our title frame as well. But for this, we're going to set this to 0 0.2. And I think the last thing that we need to do is actually throw a UI corner inside of the frame as well. And I'm going to set the corner radius of this to 0 0.05. So now we can duplicate the template a couple of times, scroll down and see how these are all displayed and how they all look. And I think they look pretty
pretty perfect. So with that being said, what we can then do is delete all the templates except for one, and we're pretty much done with creating this GUI. Anyways, with that being said, that's going to be it for this episode. As always, if you guys did enjoy the video or did help you out, make sure you smash the like button, also to subscribe button, and turn the post notifications on so you get notified every time I upload a brand new episode. I also have a Patreon if you guys like to support me and you can access all the scripts and the game file that I made during this episode. There's a link down below the description and you guys go and check that out. And with that being said, I'll see you guys in the next episode.